you know, one of the things in, in regards to employment that we talk to students about is that for students with disabilities, you, you never have to dis disclose to an employer that you have a disability. If you have a non-apparent disability, an invisible disability, meaning that the employer in a job interview cannot see that you have a disability, then you would only ask for accommodation after a job offer. And then you can ask for uh, whatever accommodations you might need. And I always tell students, you know, let's, dis let's you and I determine what those accommodations are going to be and then you can present it to the employer. That way the employer doesn't feel stuck that they have to figure it out. You present it to them and let them know what accommodations you may need. And that's done after a job offer. For students who have apparent disabilities, uh, ones that the employer can obviously tell that the person has a disability in the interview, I work with students on presenting to the, to, it's kind of like just saying calling the pink elephant in the room. You know, obviously, uh, I'm, you know, the person may use a wheelchair for mobility. So they'll talk to the employer about it and let the employer know that they're able to access anything that they, they need and, you know, just present it to the employer as, this is my disability, it's obvious that I have a disability, and basically it's not going to be a problem here because um, I can access everything on my own or I use this specialized equipment and therefore I can do the job. So those are some of the things that we talk about as far as our workability program and helping students learn how to talk to employers and what kind of a, of, um, a package that they're going to offer the employer, focusing on their abilities and skills. A lot of times employers aren't educated in the way of disability, so it's up to the, the employee or the interviewee to educate the employer and to kind of put their fears to rest, so to speak. Because in human nature, you know, people usually are fearful of things that they don't know about. So it's up to these students and our students to, to educate the employers. So we do a lot of training on how to do that. A lot of them training on empowerment and advocacy and how to talk to employers. Um, I'm interested in hearing from any of you as far as maybe some questions you might have. As far as every, you know, what I've spoken about so far, is there anything that you're interested in hearing from me about? Yeah. What do you define as a disability? A qualified disability, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, is having a disability that impedes some functional area of your life. So maybe a person who uh, uses a wheelchair for mobility, a person with a learning disability who needs accommodations, because without them, they are, are not able to, uh, to complete the, the tasks at hand. So anything, any kind of a disability that would impede a functional limitation. Also a person uh, having a record of a disability, so they may not be disabled at the time, but they might have a record of having a disability, or they might be regarded as having a disability. So somebody who may be disfigured due to um, being burned severely might not really technically have any functional limitations, but because people assume they have a disability and discriminate, them, uh, discriminate based on how they look are also covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Or if anybody has a history of it and is being dis discriminated of, against because they have a history of it, they're also covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act. I have two types of curriculum. I have, I do a lot of outreach to faculty and staff. Um, and when I worked for the Department of Rehab, I did a lot of outreach with employers, educating them on disability issues. But I have two types of curriculum that I'm using at Cal State LA. One is where I go out and I train faculty and staff on the nuts and bolts of OSD, who we are, what we do, what's our procedure, what can you expect. It's kind of the nuts and bolts of how we work within the university. The other one is more of a continuation uh, seminar training on disabilities 
and typical accommodations, and sensitivity. Because a lot of the students have come back to me and said, we need our teachers to be more sensitive to our needs. And a lot of times the teachers are just fearful of the unknown. You know, as humans, when we don't know something, we're fearful of it, we just say no. So if a teacher doesn't know how to accommodate a student, they might just say, no, I'm not gonna do this. And so, you know, what a lot of the work that I do with faculty and staff is, is that legally, we must accommodate students with disabilities. It's the legal thing to do, it's the right thing to do. Ethically, it's the right thing to do. The student, the teacher, the OSD staff, as well as the family and the parent, anybody that's involved in the family's life, uh, the student's life, I, I do a lot of work with families. You know, I always have, you know, a lot of times I have parents come in with their children, um, their student, and I work, um, we do a lot of group, group meetings to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Absolutely, absolutely. Anytime, um, anytime a student has side effects from any kind of treatment, any kind of medication, uh, we find that there's um, some cognitive issues just based on the treatment or the medication that they may or may not be on. Uh, specifically, uh, memory concentration and fatigue. Absolutely, we accommodate that. Um, Cal State's offer the same services and the UCs as well. Absolutely. All equal, absolutely. We all have the same uh, structure. What was your question? If all the CSUs and UC systems have the same, yeah, we do. Yes, yes. Accessibility is the law. But again, when I work with people, I, I, I again to just get back and then I'll wrap up. That you know, legally, it's the thing to do. Ethically, it's the right thing to do, but more than that, when I work with people, I tell them, you know, it's the fun thing to do, you know, to get creative. Accommodations are really fun, you know, it's like, okay, we always do it this way. Let's think outside the box. How are we going to make this work for this person? It can be really creative and fun. And when faculty and staff get on board with that, we have a really good time with doing accommodations. So. Uh, again, if you have any questions uh, that you weren't able to answer today or, or you didn't just, just didn't want to ask on a group level, my cards are in the back, so feel free to contact me. It's my Cal State LA card for the disabilities, as well as my private practice card if anybody's interested in therapy, and then also the Cal State LA for disability services. Um, thank you all, and thank you, Michelle.